Hello everyone, SimCFI here. We're over Folsom Lake, our practice area for the maneuvers today. First things first, let's go ahead and switch fuel tanks. Hasn't quite been 30 minutes, but we've been burning left tank for now. Let's burn the right tank. So we turn on the fuel pump, swap the fuel tanks, make sure that pressure's holding, turn off the fuel pump, pressure's holding, we're good to go. The next thing, we get the mixture all the way in. That means we can, uh, what? we can lean out the engine if we're below 75% power. Well, how do we know if we're below 75% power? And I'm turning, by the way, just to stay over the lake again. To figure out if you're below 75% power, we come down to the, the charts here. This is also in the manual, page 71. So let's just say we're at a density altitude of uh, 3,000 feet. So we come across 3,000 feet over to 75% power, go straight down, and you see it's basically 2550 RPM. 2500 RPM is way over here. And we're at 3,500 feet, uh, you know, true altitude. And there's a difference of density altitude and true pressure altitude. And so right now we're sitting around 2400 RPM, which is a good 150 RPM lower than 75%, so we're definitely good to lean the engine. Uh, the easiest way to lean the engine, there's an EGT gauge, and I've discussed uh, leaning extensively and all the theory stuff behind it, but when you have single probe EGT and all that CHT, it's only measuring one cylinder, the best way to do it is to just do it by ear. Pull the mixture back till it runs rough and push it back in. in a little bit, and you're good to go. Now we're burning less gas, and you can see that in your fuel economy up here, on your pilot's notes in the shift to menu, we're at 8.4 gallons per hour, full rich, we're at 11.4. Clean it out. There we go, right around the same values. Okay, so starting the first maneuver, we've done uh, turns and climbs and all that. We'll do descents when we go back to the airport. We're at 3,500. We're going to set up for a maneuver called slow flights, and it's uh, name implied. We're going to fly at a slower airspeed, and we're going to do that in a landing configuration. A landing configuration just means we're going to have the flaps down, gear down if we had a retractable gear airplane. So first thing you want to do is do clearing turns. So you, you do like a, we'll just do a 180 degree turn, that'll work. Usually you can do like a 90 degree turn to the right, 90 to the left, or do a 180, or just do a 360. And just checking around for other traffic in the area. Obviously this is a big deal, real world, make sure we're not climbing. Uh, if you're flying, you know, with online ATC and other people, then you might want to check that as well. So we we'll just do a clearing turn, we'll get back, get ourselves back over the lake. And so for slow flight, the setup slow flight, we're going to reduce the power down to about 1800 here. We also want to pick a visual point. Let's pick this river coming out from Folsom Lake. So we'll slow down. We want to get the airspeed indicator into this white arc down here. This is where we can start applying flaps. So let's put the first notch of flaps down. And we're going to keep the altitude of 3,500. We're on a heading of about 218, pointing towards the river and those towns down there. Second notch of flaps. Having to increase the back pressure now, because remember we're trimmed for a faster airspeed. We'll go full flaps now, which is 40 degrees of flaps. And we're going to use pitch up and down to find the airspeed. So, what airspeed do we need? Well, the Airman Certification Standards states to pick a speed about 5 to 10 knots above the normal stalling speed, so we can just use miles per hour. The normal stalling speed for with flaps down, which is where the white arc is down here, is about 55 miles per hour, and this is VS0 in the manual. And the speed we're at right now is VS, which is your stalling speed in a clean configuration. And so we're choosing 10 knots above the VS0, so that's 65 miles per hour. So that's the speed that we're going to maintain. 
So we're going to use pitch to control that. So I have to hold the nose up. If you let the nose down, the speed is going to increase. Alright, so we got pitch for airspeed. And we're going to use power, or throttle, for altitude. So if we're pitching down a little bit to get the airspeed, but now you notice we're descending a little bit, we'll add the power in, like a hundred R couple hundred RPM, and that will stop the descent because that forces us to bring the nose up for the airspeed. And now we're, we're climbing a little bit. So now we'll reduce the power just a little bit. And we're checking to make sure we're staying on our heading, 218, going towards those towns. We're at 65, and we're maintaining approximately level flight. If you start getting a little low in slow flight, altitude-wise, you're going to notice it takes quite a bit of altitude to really start climbing up. Let's kind of get it down low. Still maintaining the heading. So now we're kind of not really too low. But to make a significant climb, so you got to pitch down for that speed, keep the heading, keeping that visual. Got to add some power. See, it takes a significant amount of power to really climb up. Now, you always want to use a visual point to control your heading. Let's get this down to about 1900 RPM. That's where it sits for slow flight. You choose a visual point outside to keep your heading. Because that's a lot easier to monitor than the heading indicator. Plus, it keeps your eyes outside. You should be eyes outside 90% of the time, looking around for traffic and all that. And just come inside, check the instruments, make adjustments as necessary. All right, so now if I want to stay over the lake, let's turn to where the heading bug is, heading of 330. So what we're going to do is we're going to look to the right, make sure it's clear. And then in slow flight, um, we don't need to be turning at big bank angles because large bank angles increases your stalling speed and we're already pretty close to a stalling speed plus the slower you go the faster your turn rate is going to be so slow flight give it a little bit of right rudder we'll get it over to about 10 degrees of bank and on your attitude indicator each tick mark up here is your bank angle we have 10 20 30 45 is in the middle for our steep turns, 60 degrees of bank, maximum bank angle without parachutes, and we have a 90 degrees of bank, which we just won't ever see. And we have pitch angle marked here as well. It's about 10 and 20 degrees. Don't, don't, don't really worry about pitch angle as much. That's really just done visually. But bank angle, we'll use about 10 degrees of bank. A normal turn will be about 20 to 30. All right, so let's get this reestablished. So we're going to a heading of 330. 10 degrees of bank, and you see how fast we're turning with 10 degrees of bank. There's the Folsom Dam right there. And as we're coming up onto the heading, start rolling out, reducing, removing that rudder pressure. And there we go, 330, find a point in the distance, fly to that. And we got to pitch down just a little bit for the airspeed. And so you want to memorize this level flight pitch attitude for slow flight, because as you can see, it's a lot more nose high than your level flight pitch attitude for cruise. All right, so this is slow flight. 65 miles an hour, flaps down, holding a little bit of right, pre right rudder pressure for that torque and P factor, just like when we're climbing. Now, uh, the old school slow flight before the airman certification standards came out required you to have the stall warning on all the time and you kind of get this down to about 55 miles an hour and the star warning in this Cherokee is the red light in the middle of the panel there so it keeps slowing the airplane down there's the red light so increase power a little bit so yeah right around 53 miles an hour it's kind of tickling on there so as you can see just a little bit slower and that nose is a much higher pitch, ang pitch attitude pitch angle All right. And so turning at 10 degrees of bank is even more critical because that stall speed is going to be increasing. All right. So in this video, we talked about uh, switching fuel tanks, leaning the mixture, and slow flight. Pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. So let's go ahead and recover back to cruise. We'll get the mixture full rich, get the throttle all the way in, get rid of the last notch of flaps, raising it to 25 degrees, holding the altitude, and let that speed build. As the speed is building, the next notch of flaps out. 
and we'll go flaps up. We return to our normal cruising speed, power settings, and then we'll lean out the engine. So we'll let this thing accelerate at altitude. And let's reduce the power just a little bit, trim it out, and lean out the mixture. Alright, see you in the next video for stalls.